Right on today's episode of this thing is pretty much useless and I gotta figure out how to drive it. I'm gonna be working on hooking up traction control with the front wheel speed sensor. So I did a little bit of work so far. I added a factory front wheel speed sensor. It's factory from a Ford Ranger and it uses the factory ABS ring. So it's a 98 Ford Ranger but I ended up using 2001 front spindles to convert it to two wheel drive from four wheel drive. I did have to tap the holes that were in there. It already had the hole for the mounting points but I did have to tap the threads and I just added some washers onto the factory sensor to make up the space because the bolt was too long and the next size down was too short. So that's what we're going with. It did actually have the factory clips that go right to the frame but then I just snuck it back over here and this is gonna come up this way and then go into the firewall. So there's 54 pickups on it. So we can remember that for later when we look at the tune and set that up. But next I'm gonna be working on this VR to Hall effect sensor. So the Terminator X can't do the VR two wire sensor directly. The Dominator can, but the Terminator X cannot. So to convert it to the three wire sensor, I bought this little signal converter for it and I can put a picture of where I got that from. So this was like 18 bucks and you can see the two ins on the right side and then the five volt ground and out on the other side. So I just have some wires laid out so I'll be able to do red for 5 volt, black for ground, and then green for the signal wire. And then this I'll be able to plug right into the factory sensor. So what the traction control will do is basically read the difference between the front wheel speed and the rear wheel speed. And when the rear wheels start to spin, it'll pull timing out of the engine, pull power out of it, and hopefully hook the wheels back up. I do have a table built already which I'll show in a little bit. And it starts to pull the timing at like 3 to 5 miles an hour for wheel spin. So those are just kind of ballpark settings that I'm going to start with. I'll probably tweak it and see how it works. So my main purpose for doing this is not necessarily to fine tune it in such a way that it's going to get like the fastest time and pick up like minimal slip and get it down the track the fastest. The idea here is that if I blow the tires off and I'm going fast, I don't want to put it in the ditch. So that's my primary goal with this. Like if I'm going 70, 80 miles an hour and I get on the throttle and I lose the tires and the rear wheels are spinning 20 miles an hour faster than the front wheels, I want it to basically pull a bunch of timing out of the motor and slow it down so I can hook back up just in case I don't catch it fast enough by lifting. So that's kind of my, my main purpose with this because it will blow the tires off at like 75 right now at about 70 to 75% throttle. It'll start to spin the tires on the wastegate tune so so i don't really like that feeling because the truck doesn't go straight like if the truck was consistent and it went straight when it was spinning the tires that fast it wouldn't be so bad but the truck likes to go sideways really quick so again i'm adding it as more of a safety than like a fastest et on bad surface kind of deal if that makes sense so i might be able to eventually get it there or dialed in enough where i, I could use it to try to go faster at the track um but You'll see in the tune when we get to that part for the setup that I have it enabled above 15 miles an hour front wheel speed. So I'll still be able to do the burnout at the track and the traction control won't trigger. But above 15 miles per hour wheel speed, the traction control tables will uh, enable and be able to pull timing. So I'm not necessarily using it to fix the launches or maintain traction down the track at this point but we might be able to eventually get it there after tweaking it and dialing it in a little bit but it'll just take a lot of testing all right so i do got these stripped i'm going to put them through and then i'll solder them on i did also get this really thick uh heat shrink and then i got this smaller heat shrink here it's like thinner so i'll i will solder these on do one layer of the thin heat shrink and then one layer of this thick stuff this is like this thing here indoor outdoor splice kit one of the ones that come with this really thick lug in it. All right, so I do have this thing all soldered up now. I'm just gonna take this heat shrink, put it over the board. Okay, so I deep pinned this side so I could get some heat shrink on it. So I added another tube of heat shrink here, another guy here, and now I'll slide this thick one over. It should be just about as long, and that'll be, that'll be nice and strong there, so I shouldn't have to worry about the wires flexing or snapping the solder joints off. Okay, so we'll go over this tune setup a little bit. I have the tire diameter at 29.5 inch, so this is for the rear wheel speed. This is just under the transmission tab. 
under the I.O. section, I'll go to the input setup. I have front wheel speed. It's on digital speed frequency. And I'll go to configure. The type is miles per hour. I did put some parameters here, but you don't really need this setup for this to work. Pulses to average, I set up on five. 54 pulses per rotation. So that's the 54 different splines on the pickup that I was talking about earlier. Gear ratio is going to be one because there's no gear ratio change from the pickup to the wheel. It's one for one. So when the rotor spins around one time, there's 54 pulses and the wheel diameter is 29 and a half inches, which spins around one time. So like if you were setting up a drive shaft speed sensor, you would want to put a gear ratio in here because the number of pulses would be changing in relation to your tire diameter. So because this is not going through a differential, I'm just leaving it at one and then go into the pin map. I just put the front wheel speed sensor on input one and that's pretty much that for setup. And I did test this by hand. I just put a wrench on the wheel stud and then spun the caliper around. So that all seems to be working well. I'll show you the traction control stuff that I have set up. So traction control one and traction control two. So I'm using two different tables. They're both timing offset and speed and front wheel speed are the axes. One's for the rear wheel speed. One is front wheel speed. And because I still want to be able to do a burnout at the track, I have the advanced enable on and based on the front wheel speed above 15 miles per hour. So that should allow me to stop, do the burnout, get rolling without it activating the traction control. And then when I'm above 15 miles per hour going down the track, it'll be able to use this table. So the first table is from 20 miles per hour to 70 miles per hour. The second table is from 70 miles per hour to 140. And you can see the front wheel speed I have going 20 to 70. And then the rear wheel speed I have going from 21 to 90. So this doesn't just go straight at an angle. It actually does kind of go up a little bit more. Like it doesn't just go 0, 0, 0 all the way along these boxes. So if I follow this right to the corner, uh, I actually have it pulling a little bit higher because in my head, what I wanted to do was be able to add some resolution here and be able to show wheel spin on this table. So if I go 60 miles per hour and then I look at 80 miles per hour, it's pulling uh, 10 degrees of timing. So 40 degrees and 60 degrees, it's pulling 10 degrees or so 40 miles per hour and 60 miles per hour, it's pulling 10 degrees, 70 miles per hour and 90 miles per hour, it's pulling around 10 degrees. So I feel like just from driving it before, when the wheel speed gets to about 20 miles per hour faster than the front wheel speed, that's where the truck kind of starts to get a little bit hard to drive. But you can see I have it pulling 2 degrees at 6 miles per hour above 70. And then if we look at 60, it's pulling 2 degrees about 7 miles per hour. So I just tried to set this up to where when the rear wheels are spinning 4 to 6 miles per hour faster, it starts to pull a little bit of timing. So here's 40. It's pulling 2 degrees at 49. One of the reasons that I offset the bottom axis for the rear wheel speed is I wanted to be able to carry this into the second table with a smooth transition. So if I leave this at 70 and I leave this at 70 and then I just run zeros all the way across to this corner, it'll get to a point where I'm at 70 and 70 before it transfers to the next table. And what in my head, what that would actually be doing is ramping timing back in. So you might be down here where it's actually pulling timing. And then as you start to come up here into this portion of the table, you could get, go from a point where it's actually pulling timing because of wheel spin. And then, and then as the front wheel speed is coming up, it could actually be ramping timing back in, even though the wheels didn't really catch or correct yet. So that's why I did it that way. I wanted to just maintain this timing reduction until it transfers to the next table. So now here, if we look at 70 and 90, it's pulling around that same nine to 10 degrees in this area. And then this basically does the same thing here. So 100 miles per hour and 120, 130, it's pulling 10 degrees. 126 to 146, 148, it's pulling about 10 degrees with a max available that it would pull up to 30 degrees. So I did try to make sure that all of the points where it's at zero 
the rear wheel speed axis is higher than the front wheel speed. So 79, 0, it's still at 82. So 84 and 88, it pulls. 93 and 94, it's at 0. But if it goes to 100, it's going to start to pull 1 degree. 98 and 100, it's still at 0. But if it goes to 106, it pulls 2 degrees. 103 and 106, it's at 0. But if it goes to uh, 112, it'll pull 2 degrees. <clears throat> so that's kind of the concept. So you could get to a point where, say, 93 miles per hour and 100 miles per hour rear wheel speed, if you're starting to spin maybe just 4 to 5 miles per hour a little bit, it could actually just pull one degree or two degrees and just pull enough timing. Like if you're just on the edge of traction, you could get it to a point where it's just going to pull enough power to hook back up and then it'll put it back in. And another thing for the secondary table, I just have it activating above 50. So I feel like that should work okay. I was able to get some decent resolution here and a decent amount of timing pulled. Uh, wide open, I'm running probably, probably 15 to 19 degrees of timing. So hopefully it would never really see this section. I'm hoping that once it gets gets to pulling around 8 to 10 degrees of timing with a 20 mile an hour wheel spin, that it would actually be enough to pull enough power and get it to hook back up or at least help me be able to, you know, notice something's happening and lift and avoid something bad going on. Because at the track, like if the track gets wet or something, sometimes the wheels can spin really quick and you don't even really realize the wheels are spinning until you're going sideways. So... I did have that happen once at the track in the Ranger, and it was not easy to correct it. And I thought I was going to lose it into the wall that time. Okay, so that's pretty much that. The front wheel speed works. Uh, I showed you the traction control tables that I'm going to start with, and I'll probably take it out and go drive it tomorrow. It's, a, it's late today. It's like 9.30, so I'm not going to do that today. So it's something to think about, too. When this was on the dyno, it was making about 20 to 25 horsepower per degree of timing. So if it's pulling 10 degrees, it could potentially be pulling up to 250 horsepower out of it at that time. Once the wheel spin gets to the rear, rear wheel speed being 20 miles an hour faster than the front wheel speed, in that situation, it would start to pull timing out of it as the wheel speed increases. If the wheel speed is still increasing up to 20 miles an hour faster, it'll pull 10 degrees out. And at 20 to 25 horsepower per degree, if it's making 600, horsepower could pull enough horsepower out of it to bring it back down to like 400 horsepower and hook the wheels back up one thing i'll have to watch out for though is just how the timing changes quick timing changes are going to affect the boost level and what the turbos are doing so we'll be able to get some data on it i'll go drive it tomorrow and we'll go from there <laughs>